I've been an iPhone user ever since the iPhone 6, and I liked it so much that I upgraded to a new iPhone every single year, up until my current iPhone 11 Pro Max, which I love. And with the release of Samsung's Galaxy S20 Ultra, I decided to try it out and see what differences I would notice so I could give you guys a good idea of what it'll be like going from an iPhone to the new S20 Ultra. The first thing I notice is that the Samsung feels quite a bit thicker in the hand, but I honestly don't really mind because I'm used to not using a case on my phone. In terms of the width and height, the 11 Pro Max is already a pretty big phone, so I can just barely use it with one hand when I really need to. But the S20 Ultra's huge size just pushes it over the edge, so you definitely want to be using two hands, especially if you don't use a case. I'm very thankful that Samsung finally got rid of that Bixby button because it was honestly useless to me and I would accidentally hit it every now and then, and now since it's gone, you also get a really nice and clean layout. I just wish it had a physical mute switch like on my iPhone. Everyone's also been complaining about the headphone jack being gone on the S20 line, but the iPhone hasn't had it in years, so I obviously don't care. The back of the S20 Ultra looks great, but I wish they used matte glass instead of glossy, since I absolutely love the matte glass on my iPhone, since you can't see fingerprints on it and it actually does a great job at being scratch resistant. The huge camera bump actually looks pretty nice, but the worst thing about it is that it's incredibly thick, like much thicker than the bump on the iPhone 11 Pro. This causes it to wobble quite a bit when laying flat on a table, and it's so large that my fingers touch the bump when holding it in landscape mode, which was a bit annoying and it means that you get extra fingerprints all over the lenses. The display is absolutely massive and it looks amazing. I love the small hole punch camera compared to the notch on the iPhone that's honestly getting really old at this point. I also absolutely love using the 120Hz mode on the S20 Ultra since everything feels super smooth compared to 60Hz on my iPhone. It's definitely worth it even though 1440p looks a bit more detailed in comparison. The gaming performance was great at 120fps, with no noticeable performance issues or frame drops. The phone itself felt impressively cool even after an hour straight of gameplay, and it only used about 15% battery life after that full hour. I'd honestly say that because of this massive 6.9 inch display and the 120fps support, this is hands down the best phone for gaming so far. It just sucks that the best mobile games like Fortnite, PUBG, and Call of Duty Mobile don't yet support 120fps, but I'm sure that they will soon, especially if the iPhone 12 gets a 120hz display. My iPhone 11 Pro Max has substantially better battery life compared to my old XS Max, and I've noticed that even though the S20 Ultra has great battery life while gaming, it was actually worse overall compared to my iPhone, even though it has a much larger battery. In terms of internet data speeds, we have sub-6 5G here with T-Mobile, and in our office, which has pretty terrible LTE speeds, we got a much faster download speed on the S20 Ultra. With my 11 Pro Max, YouTube videos would pause to buffer every now and then, but that hasn't happened yet with the S20. Loading videos and web pages has been incredibly snappy compared to the 11 Pro Max. Although my iPhone has the loudest speakers on any iPhone that I've ever tested, the S20 Ultra speakers are quite a bit louder. Just listen to the sound comparison for yourself. The extra volume is great because there are honestly days when I wish my iPhone speakers were louder, like when I'm trying to listen to a podcast, so I'm very happy with the speakers on the S20 Ultra. And thanks to these awesome speakers and the huge display, this is probably the best phone out there for watching Netflix or anything else. I also really love the picture-in-picture -picture mode, which is great if you need to quickly do something else without having to pause the video. iPhones have always felt a bit faster to me, maybe because of the slightly faster animations or the touch sensitivity, but now that the S20 Ultra has 120Hz refresh rate and 240Hz touch sensitivity, it feels much faster and snappier than the iPhone every single time. I also like the fact that it comes with an SD card slot that supports up to one terabyte of extra storage, instead of paying hundreds of dollars more to upgrade the storage on an iPhone. 
I'm personally a Mac user, both here at the office and at home on my MacBook Pro, so it really sucks to not have AirDrop, which literally makes transferring photos and files to and from my Mac and other Apple devices the most convenient thing ever. But thankfully, the Android file transfer app works pretty well when connecting it using the included USB-C cable. It's awesome that the S20 Ultra supports up to 45 watt fast charging, but they only include a 25 watt charger, but that's still faster than the 18 watt charger you get with the iPhone 11 Pro. And the reverse wireless charging feature is really cool since most of the new wireless earbuds coming out today come with wireless charging. This feature also made it possible for Samsung to create an awesome new case that actually lights up and gives you an exclusive wallpaper that you can't get anywhere else. I absolutely love Face ID on my iPhone and have always preferred it compared to the ultrasonic under display fingerprint sensor that Samsung's been using. But now, with the S20 Ultra, I've noticed that they've really improved the speed and reliability of this fingerprint scanner, so it's actually not too bad anymore. I absolutely love the always-on display that tells me all the info I need to see without having to turn the display on, which is something that's sorely missing from the iPhone. And as many of you know, you get a lot more options for customization in the settings with Android, which is something you don't get with iOS so tech heads will definitely enjoy using the S20 Ultra. One of the main features that Samsung really tried to focus on with this phone is the cameras, and they decided to pack in some crazy features like the 108 megapixel main camera, the crazy 100X super zoom telephoto camera, and a 40 megapixel selfie cam. So let's talk about it. I've noticed that selfie photos look better on the S20 than on the iPhone, especially in low light, so that's a pretty huge plus. In our blind camera test, the S20 Ultra did incredibly well for a lot of the scenarios. It only lost by one point to the iPhone because of the iPhone's incredibly detailed deep fusion feature and the better night mode photos. So photo quality on the S20 Ultra is actually really impressive, especially considering the fact that we should get more software improvements soon. Selfie video looks pretty good as well, but if you shoot at 4K 60fps, it seems to be way out of focus especially when bringing it closer to your face, which is annoying since I like to use 4K60 on my iPhone. You can see what I mean in our video quality comparison, which I'll link to at the end of this video. The same thing for the rear camera. 4K60 only works with the main lens, not the telephoto or the ultra wide, which also sucks because the iPhone lets you shoot 4K60 with literally any of its lenses. The S20 Ultra can't shoot 120fps slow fees like the iPhone can, but that feature is honestly a gimmick and I haven't used it at all since I got it. We did try out the new super hyped up 8K video recording mode on the S20 Ultra, but it currently has some pretty massive limitations. First off, the autofocusing speed and reliability is absolutely horrible. It suffered from constant focus hunting, and in some cases, it wouldn't focus at all. It's also limited to recording at 24 FPS, and the exposure gets considerably darker compared to shooting in 4K. Not only that, but stabilization goes completely out the window as well. To make it even worse, 8K mode only works on the main lens, so if you're going to be zooming in, you actually get quite a bit more detail by just shooting at 4K instead. So it seems like the 8K mode is really only useful if you're standing still, not rack focusing between subjects, and when you're in a very bright environment. Absolutely do not use it for low light, because as you can see here, the iPhone 11 Pro's 4K is actually more detailed than the 8K on the S20 Ultra in this medium to low light scene. The good news is that the regular old 4K 60 mode on the S20 Ultra actually works and looks pretty decent, so I'm pretty happy about that, but it's still a bit behind the iPhone. And the telephoto lens actually does look really nice if you're shooting 4K at 30 frames per second, giving you a lot more zoom detail compared to the iPhone, so that's a big plus. But in general, for overall camera quality, I would honestly stick with my iPhone 11 Pro Max because you get the extra freedom to shoot 4K60 using any of the lenses, and it honestly gives you better video quality overall compared to the S20 Ultra. The photos on the iPhone might not turn out the best every single time, especially in bright environments where I myself chose the S20 Ultra's images more often, but overall, the iPhone constantly pumps out good quality images in terms of detail and accurate white balance. So all in all, I'm really impressed with the S20 Ultra, especially for the awesome display, but I honestly still can't give up my iPhone, and it's because of iOS and the Apple ecosystem. 
Everything is interconnected and it all just works so well together. The S20 Ultra isn't perfect, but there's hope that Samsung will fix the issues with the cameras in future software updates, and if they do, it really will become an excellent phone. So I would honestly recommend it for Android users as it's the best Android phone I've ever used. But at the $1,400 price tag, you might want to consider the S20 Plus or the regular $1,000 S20. But if you're currently an iPhone user and you're trying to choose between the S20 Ultra and the iPhone 11 Pro Max, I would honestly just go with the iPhone. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to tap the like button and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. And you should definitely go and check out our camera comparison video by clicking right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.